Good afternoon, I'm Daniel Miller and this is Destiny Academy supporting Mind. A warm welcome to all of our friends, fans, community members, participants, and everyone supporting us on various platforms, also watching it live today. I can't believe for the life of me that two days after the release, I'm getting this message. I'm honestly, I can't believe this. And I've seen so many negative comments and views across all platforms indicating that Bungie yet again didn't sort it out and... Um, I mean, I was reading some reviews today indicating everything worked perfectly and purposely I've not even tried to get in yesterday thinking that within the period of 20, 24, 48 hours everything was going to work as it should. But look at this now. I mean, uh, there is no maintenance, I don't think. I'll, I'll have to have a look. It's grossly disappointing. Uh, in view of what had happened in the past, I had not purchased the full expansion and you know there are so many people requesting refund and being so outraged uh, by the fact that uh, not just during the first couple of hours but within a couple of days they're still not able to access uh, what they paid for and I don't I really honestly I, I don't understand what the reason can be it's just just mind-boggling apart from huge dissatisfaction and huge amount of fury um, that everyone would have come across on social networking elsewhere. I did read some very good reviews of uh, um, The Fighter Shape, most importantly from one of the best writers on Destiny, uh, Mr. Paul Tassi, who writes for Forbes, and he gave it a 10 out of 10. He completed the campaign. But at the same time, I've got to say, I kind of think, well, you know, he probably did not complete the campaign uh, at the moment. He had pre-release codes and he probably played everything before the game was released. So he didn't really want to say anything initially due to the problems. But now he was giving us a big rundown on the content and uh, how he experienced it, indicating that it was by far the best compared to any other expansion that Bungie produced, uh, much superior to uh, The Taken King and... Uh, uh, the Witch Queen. So, you know, these are obviously encouraging reviews and encouraging comments and, and thoughts on what is offered. But in order to be able to experience it, we need to be, first of all, uh, given access to the game. And why on earth is this happening? Error. Let me just double check whether there, um, there is anything on Bungie Help. Uh, I've got to say, I really, I really have no patience for that sort of thing. I'm very patient on the release dates understand there will be many people coming in from everywhere the service may be having some difficulties but if you go to bungee help on twitter just try to think try, try to um, read how many error messages were popping up on people's uh, platforms it is just absolutely incredible and uh, um you know um uh, sun peach says service have been taken down well when and why because yesterday they had six hour maintenance and the day before there was 20 hour maintenance. So what, what is going on? Let me just have a look. Um, because obviously we won't be able to do the stream. If, if this goes on, it's just, it's just unworkable. And many people on Twitter indicated this was unplayable. They said really they're furious because nothing really worked. So, you know, um, let me see. Ali's here. Hello, Ali. How are you doing? We also have our friend... Um, Sand Peach in here. Really good to see you guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for watching and thank you for being our very dedicated and valued community members. How are you guys doing? Have you been able to get in? Have you been able to try anything? Um, 
Because I'm getting messages still today from various community members that they're still not able to, to get in. And that's on PC, PlayStation and Xbox, you know, across the board. It just, just seems to be still uh, a, ma a major problem. Let me just have a check on Twitter to see what they um, have. And Aligot says, Destiny 1 is working surprisingly. Well, I mean, they've not done anything to it, you know. Destiny 1 is just up and running. What they did do during that 24-hour maintenance is they were disabling Destiny 1 servers for the launch. So they said, ah, because we are disabling the, uh, 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 we are disabling the um, Destiny 1 servers during the first few hours of the final shape in order to make it better. But actually, obviously, it didn't work. And, you know, I, I don't really know how they are uh, providing maintenance or whether there is the same lot of servers being used for the board games. I have no idea. You know, I, I'm really not that uh, technical or that savvy on, on the whole thing. So I can't really tell you uh, um, anything much more about it. I think the guys from Digital Foundry would probably know a lot more. So let me just have a look. Let me just have a look. I'll go to Bungie Help, right? So let's see. what What is there? Right. Right, so it says here, upcoming maintenance, June the 6th, that is today, right? And uh, they said here, uh, maintenance will start at 5.30 a.m. And then it will end at 5.40, no, it will end at 8. So that would be in two hours, right? So what time is this UK time? I need to work this out. So that is specific, right? Let me just see whether this is all legit, bear with me. Right, eight hours ahead, okay. So according to this, in the US, in the area which comes under the uh, Pacific Daylight Time, it is 7.11. And in here, on the notification from Bungie, I hear that downtown ends at 8, 8 a.m. Okay. So that means still, what? 50 minutes or something. So I can be just telling you about other things, really, whilst we wait, right? I mean, is everybody's, uh, well, it must be, if they're conducting maintenance, nobody else can access it. Anyway, let's let's talk about it. Let's see. I'm just incredibly frustrated with this, I've got to say. And if anyone um, is watching at the moment, just go to Twitter, which is Bungie Help Twitter, right? And just have a look at the number of comments which have been applied to every one of the postings since whatever, 6 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday. You probably talk about a few hundred thousand comments uh, which just venting out the satisfaction with Bungie's incapability on the technical side. I mean, really, the enjoyment of the game will be spoiled if they carry on like this. I, I don't know what's causing this. They, they need to invest a lot more into the maintenance of the service because... You know, uh, as far as I remember, the last expansion didn't have that many difficulties. But then maybe th there are different reasons for it on the technical side of things. Because this expansion is changing everything. I don't know. It, I mean, I can just speculate. But just have a look at the number of negative comments. And also I've seen on Steam, it was like 90% negative. And, you know, a huge number of people bought um, Destiny on Steam. Uh, for this reason, they want to play it um, competitively on the PCs. You know, I'm 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 really I'm speechless, honestly. I am I'm really I don't know what to say. So, you know, um what what I can do is just to make sure that people don't see this this terrible thing, we can put this uh, dialogue screen on. So you can see the dialogue screen, we can talk. Um bear with me, up to a point when it comes up. There we are. And then we'll we'll be able to see all together uh, uh, what what is uh, happening with destiny 
in one of the pop-ups so just i have to leave it on that error message in order to see what's going on so let me see what our friends were saying in here um but maybe we have here ali we have um sand peach and we have playmore so thanks very much for joining us really appreciate it and uh, um Plano says, uh, I managed to make some progress on the final shape, and it is great. Well, that's terrific. How long did you have to wait before you got to it? Just quite curious. Look at this, another message. Do you think increased traffic login services to Destiny are currently being throttled? Please turn this screen until your login services table and you are logged into Destiny 2 getting another message almost as if I heard me <laughs> that's funny wanted to hear from our friend um, Playmore yeah uh, Playmore says on launch night I waited two and a half hours until I managed to get logged in well that's pretty good you know because many people waited for eight hours and I've seen some of our friends from the US saying I've taken a day off um, work in order to play on time and uh, you know I waited for eight hours and then decided to go to bed and I'll come back to it in the next few days there's been some other comments um, indicating there was one guy saying uh, that he was not feeding his children and he wasn't doing this and that it just seemed like really a, a bit abrasive you know I don't really <laughs> think that that was relevant it's just expressing that degree of uh, aggravation with the whole thing and um uh, Plano says, uh, um, got maybe four hours gameplay before it started getting error messages. Uh, didn't quite get whether you, you actually played on your PC or your PlayStation or consoles or Xbox. Quite curious to hear. Because I remember Sakapupa told me the other day he was also waiting. He couldn't get in. He was on his PC. Um, and um, Plano says that he was playing on PS5. Yeah, um, well, I'm playing it also on PS5 in here, as you can see, nothing works. And the other day I waited also. I didn't wait for longer than an hour. I did some other things as well. And uh, <clears throat> it was just <clears throat> the idea was to be able to run a stream that would introduce the initial sections and the changes, you know, of the final shape. So we can see how they rework the structure, the strategy and everything else to which the game is delivered. And the idea was for that to be done uh, roughly around the release time. So I, I expected some problems at six o'clock, you know, um, and uh, I thought maybe we'll do it a bit later. But, uh, you know, it just didn't seem to be possible, I'm afraid. It was just carrying on and carrying on. And really, uh, if you go to Bungie help page, you'll see that the problems are, I guess, arising in all sorts of compartments. They're getting Weasel and, uh, you know, all the other messages which we would pick up from time to time when playing um, Destiny 1 as well. And I, I, it, it really, it, it, you know, it's mind-boggling, uh, considering this is a, it's a huge company also now they're under the sony umbrella and they have access to some additional services and m my feeling is that had they stayed with microsoft they probably would have had very few problems because you know microsoft owned the entire network of service and everything even playstation have to rely on microsoft cloud services and <clears throat> and i've got to say i, I played the other day a couple of uh, playstation plus titles uh, on stream i just want to ask play more do you also use the the same services um, as myself, are you also subscribed to our PlayStation Plus Premium? Because really, quite frankly, the streaming on some of the games doesn't work at all properly on PlayStation 5. Some games work fine, but some games are terrible. I just keep getting message, your internet connection is not good enough, and it just keeps you know crashing all the time. So I don't really know what the reason for that is, because my internet connection is very good. It's not ultra-fast fiber, but it's certainly extremely fast, and the upload is up to 30 and the download is up to 160 so i don't know what the problem is it to me it seems that the service is not working properly as it should that's that's you know um 
I, I mean, generally, the streaming services on Xbox as well, if you're not, not fast internet, it just, you'll get sometimes a bit of a, a lag. And a, but, you know, it, it does seem to perform, particularly for indie games, it's fine. But for the bigger titles, uh, let me just see what our friend's saying here. Bear with me. <coughs> And uh, Playmos says, uh, um, I've had full PS5 dashboard crashes while playing the game, which I haven't had for a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's due to uh, the problems with the game. And Playmos says, yes, I'm on PS Premium membership, but do not really take advantage of the games. You should be able to download the PS3 games, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking, as I'm quite curious. I'm quite curious uh, whether you're experiencing the same problem because I know that you, you, you are um, uh, in possession of a much um, greater quality internet than myself. I mean, I'm on 4 and um, 4G, 5G router, so that's providing me really uh, re reasonably fast speeds. And uh, um, I still can't have fiber. We don't have fiber in, in, in you know, uh, in Hartford, so there's there's nothing that I can do. And uh, um, so I'm, I'm just wondering if you were to be streaming, you know, instead of downloading through PlayStation Premium Service, you'd be streaming directly, whether um, you also get it choppy. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's similar. Like like you said, the stream service works okay, but I've had some choppy gameplay. Well, it depends on the game. Um, Final Fantasy VII Remake, I played the other day on um, that service uh, through... Um, the, the you know the streaming side of things and uh, you know just very choppy unplayable it wasn't crashing but just choppy all the time very choppy and then you know cutting in and out so to speak and then it just it didn't seem to be working properly if, if if i was to be playing an older game like an indie game then i think there'd be fewer problems it's just down to the bandwidth it's down to the the graphics and everything else that uh, the game's using and um you know i watched uh, Digital Foundry presentation uh, wasn't that recent, it was last year at some point. And these are like tech savvy guys that, you know, leached you from the very top of the industry. They said with Microsoft Cloud Services, the on, on Xbox Game Pass, unless you are on the fastest fiber, it just doesn't work properly. I had the same sort of problem with those services before I managed to get my 4G, 5G router for ultra fast internet um, so you know they work but they're not as good as they should be really for the games that is they work perfectly for everything else it's the streaming of the games i guess it's just maybe it's 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 a too big of a leap you know of a leap it's just that's that's probably what's causing it the tech may be not as developed to provide this um, and you know there are problems with speed and access, and maybe that's what we are getting with with these games. Uh, if you were to be reading all the negative comments, there was one common denominator, and that common denominator was as follows: Why is it that every single live server game that's being released of late is having exactly the same problem on on launch? So you know it's obvious it's because. It's a, it affects different developers, different publishers, different companies, and it's the same sort of thing. I, I don't know what, you know, I have no idea what's causing it. At the end of the day, I think it's down to the tech. We probably are going to be seeing less of that in the next four or five years. Because, um, you know, they, they'll can't wait. They'll, uh, as you've seen with the shareholders, they're very keen on flogging it and having the returns as quickly as possible, as early as possible. I mean, to be fair, the games cost a lot. Uh, on average, these big blockbusters will cost you anything from 120 million to $500 million. They will all forked out well in advance. And obviously, no returns up to the point where the game's released. So um, the investors become really trigger happy and it just it's a mismatch. On one hand, you're promising people the whole lot of enhancements, improvements, and you know, bettering of the services, and then what happens is something else, because you're not in possession of that technology. I think Anthem, probably the best example of them all. I think Anthem must have been an amazing game, and they should have waited an extra five years, and probably everything would have come out completely differently to what we've seen, and uh, maybe even more than five years. 
and you know it just just backfired uh, that was a dreadful launch it's just completely everything went downhill and uh, um you know nothing worked what annoyed me was rubber banding you get that on some games and it's a, it's a live server pvp game um i mean pve game and you come in and then you keep walking forward and you're being constantly brought back i've not had that recently i've got to admit but anthem was the one that had it literally across the board i did have some of that in call of duty cold war remember myself and spurs playing it live and then we, we had rubber banding both of us so it, it is a technical issue it's probably to do with the capacity of servers to be sufficing that many people accessing the game at the same time and you'd appreciate as we carry on we are having the numbers uh, you know that's seriously dropping you don't have like half a million few million people uh, uh, playing the, the, the same game at the same moment so you know that's 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 just obviously what's very different and our friend um, our friend Playmos says uh, um, Motorstorm was unplayable yeah that's right did you not see uh, Ubisoft have taken down the service for the crew and you remember last year they had a big presentation where this game was being you know hugely presented and there was a huge excitement about the crew and everything and it was now it didn't sell and at the end of the day i understand the logic behind it um these games are extremely expensive and similar to what you have with you know the big hollywood blockbusters they want the returns back on the first weekend so if they break even within the first three days when the film is released they're happy because then all the other capital will just trickle in and they'll, they'll have their shares if the money is not made within three days for major blockbuster release in cinema then there are very many problems for everyone they will get the money back eventually in some cases if we're not talking about some sort of unbelievable disaster but you know um video gaming is I guess following the same trail of expectations um, video gaming has gone down the route of the similar expense albeit there are many more games being made with a much more of a, uh, uh, of a um, higher budget allocated so you're talking about very many titles that carry that degree of risk so it's you know uh, video gaming is not a risk averse industry it's just a fact and um, I don't know really this is annoying and you know for anyone I mean obviously you invested in the final shape um, DLC play more and it was about 70 pounds I believe the standard edition is about 200 pounds complete edition in the special one with with um, figurines and all sorts and the joy of investing is when you have that return when the game comes out and you try it you remember the days where people were queuing up you know outside the shops in order to get the game first sometimes the queue was enormous in my local area of london in alexander palace you know you go to the areas like um, wood green you had several shops in there uh, selling games at the time and the queues were like lengthy you know mile long queues people waiting to get in at the midnight when the game's released when the sale starts for them to get their hands on the physical copy go back home and play straight away all night long and i guess it's the same expectation right so people will want to be cracking on and i guess you know if you went to a shop you purchased the physical copy you still have to travel back home by the time you got back home if you went local you know the, the, there were lots of chores but in this instance it's like instant access and in theory everyone should be able to do it at the same minute straight away um that is uh, uh <laughs> even more so grossly disappointing i can understand some problems when nothing works like you said you know the entire dashboard was like collapsing and you were crashing all the time you know i mean i remember uh, analyzing the problems with anthem and i was very curious to see what uh, um, the guys from ea and from bioware would would give us an excuse or an explanation as to why it was so bad and they said that they actually enable every one of the servers available in order for everything to work properly and 
the number of servers accessible to the users was not an issue. So what was the issue then? Well, they said the issue was to do with Frostbite engine. It's the Frostbite engine that didn't seem to be compatible with that degree of participation for the multiplayer. I don't know. I can just believe, obviously, what they described. But um, a developer of that magnitude, you know, really, honestly, that size with that investment, they really need to think about these things in advance. There has got to be... Yeah, I can see that PlayStation wants to shut me down now, so we'll go back to um, the Find the Shape uh, title page, the main menu, whatever. Our friend Playmos says, yeah, I used to do midnight launches, did them for the Nintendo 3DS. Well, there you go. So you know it was like queuing up uh, up there in the rain and you know cold weather and wind and all sorts. I've seen it quite a few times when I was coming back home um, on a bus and um, lengthy queues, rain pouring down and everyone kind of just happy that they, they get that you know new edition of Halo, new edition of uh, um, of uh, uh, Elder Scrolls or any other games. Uh, Call of Duty in particular, I remember, was extremely popular. The lengthy excuse that I've seen. Still a very popular game today. You really wonder what it's going to be like um, uh, with uh, um, Black Ops um, coming out on uh, Game Pass. And there's been a lot of chatter on various platforms you know, in the industry on whether Microsoft and Activision want to be introducing a new economic model, you know, like a new ecosystem for um, the sales of the games in the future because obviously once they release Black Ops 6 then I think we'll, we'll have a, all the other uh, um, installments of the franchise released to the same platform and you know I guess it will be a problem for some people I, I just think as it stands today it's the best if you have if you're in position to have obviously both consoles and a PC they can just swing from one to the other I think Switch and Nintendo will be always on the sidelines because they're the most popular console and uh, um, they will not be releasing the majority of the titles for other platforms for the obvious reason unless they get integrated in some, some way in the near future through cloud access or something which is what they've been talking about so you know it's, it's, it's hard to tell I just think that the new the new leadership of Sony they're just changing the leadership as we speak I've seen a couple of postings on uh, Eurogame, I think, about the new new chap. And, you know, new people coming in, pursuing exactly the same institution policy. And it is not going to be successful. You have other competitors pursuing cross-platform, cross-access, cross-save, and sharing the titles with others. And you want to be proprietary, i.e. having the title just for yourself as exclusives, you will fail. And you've seen them already a few times during the last five, six years when they were trying to contradict um, Microsoft. They, they wanted to kind of beat them to it by indicating, yeah, but we, we are not allowing our main titles to be day one releases on streaming platforms. We are not going to be including the big AAA blockbusters on our uh, PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus and, you know, and failed. They failed. That's just a fact. And people will buy those titles eventually. And I think Microsoft's uh, uh, Game Pass indicated not maybe for every one of the titles. You know, um, I guess for the majority of the small indie titles, uh, they will have like the big initial exposure. So instead of I don't know, a few hundred people playing, there'll be like a few hundred thousand people accessing it. Um, a new title that otherwise people would have not noticed. But then the sales, you know, they, they try it. They don't like it, or they play it and say, oh, it's not really a game for me, and that's it. So the question is where the monetary value comes to the developer from that launch. The way I see it is, it's not immediate, but if you are succeeding with your product, you attract a lot of customers, and it's reflected on access and downloads, you're likely to be getting some other investment from some of the biggies. So the next title may have a better uh, uh, um, uh, launch, for maybe something outside of stream platforms, indicating that there are going to be better sales, you know? So, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's a very, very fast moving industry. And uh, uh, all of you who are a bit of uh, uh, 
of an older generation, if you've spent some time analyzing other entertainment industries, like for instance, music, or in particular film, film has been around for a lot longer, obviously, in terms of the commercial distribution, um, you would have realized that there have been times where the entire industry was uprooted, like for instance, when invented sound films, and it was a very, very fast changing industry. So they had, you know, the sound film was properly introduced in 27, 1927, it did take them about three or four years to uh, adapt cinemas, i.e. picture houses or you know, theatres, to uh, the use of the sound, because you had to purchase the equipment, evidently, projectors, and then second, the uh, loudspeakers and the PA systems and all sorts. And this was not easy, it was extremely expensive. But at the same time, as you had a swing in terms of how the cinemas were used, you also had the same uh, 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 um, change emerging within the industry itself. Many people who were very successful during the silent era fell out because they were not suitable for talkies. They had funny voices, they spoke, uh, you know, accents which were from different parts of the world that other people could not understand. And um, that was a serious problem for them. So the whole generation of these film stars um, basically fizzled away into oblivion overnight and many of them ended uh, tragically really because they couldn't accept that their fame was gone uh, so quickly and so suddenly but it was a very fast changing fast moving industry and what's happening in the video industry of today is very similar it's a very fast moving fast changing industry things are progressing rapidly forward uh, hand in hand with the enhancement of the new engines, new distribution systems, uh, new access and you know as you could see uh, on, on multiple platforms and instant streaming etc. So that that is changing the nature of the industry and also the tactics we're getting and what we can be doing. Um, you know just like in any economy if it is developing too fast there are too many threats and liabilities honestly. Um, you know on one hand we hear oh big showcase event hundreds of fantastic titles and all sorts of interesting games. And then a few months later, the studio is closing down, not making money, things are not working out. You know, the reality of that is, um, if you go to supermarket, I'll give you an example. Our friend Playmore will know that, as well as myself. I'm sure you've been to France or to Belgium. Did you notice the difference in choice? That the French and the Belgians get in the supermarkets. You go to their supermarkets, you know, Tesco style or Sainsbury style, the quality of things on offer in there are tenfold compared to what we get here. So many different products. The question is what is selling? What is making the revenue? So, you know, uh, kind of a Netflix syndrome. You want to watch a film, you have thousands of titles to choose from. You spend two hours deciding what you will be watching. Eventually, maybe you watch something, maybe it's too late and you don't watch anything. Um, you know, with games, it's the same thing. It's very many titles, and uh, one has to be very disciplined in terms of how one is approaching the industry, because you might be just buying everything, or, I don't know, trying out new games on streaming platforms, never finishing any, and hopping from one to the other. You know, it's it's just, just the way things are. And from having relatively fewer choices 30 years ago, with very few games being produced due to cost and everything else, Today, you know, games are popping up at all times, various publishers, streaming platforms, you name it, and it's mind-boggling. I've got to say, I mean, I really read the news every day, seven days a week, and um, very hard to catch up with some of those developments. And also, I'm sorry to see that studios are folding up and, you know, people losing their jobs and all this, and, but I, I know that there are certain economic realities behind it and uh, um, I mean evidently people prefer certain titles doesn't matter what you offer and how you package it certain people will you know go to your local shop and will buy wholemeal bread or they'll buy just uh, a white bloomer loaf and they'll just want that doesn't matter how good the other product is they just want that if people want to play destiny and nothing else if people want to play fallout 76 nothing else and you can't be forcing them into that, you know. And uh, <laughs> the whole idea behind uh, the um, ecosystems which have been built around such games like Destiny and um, Elder Scrolls and uh, you know Fallout is that you are living in that world and you're purchasing items which are offered to you and you have, like in Destiny, 
many different games within one big title, PvP, PvE, those two combined. Um, then, you know, RPG style sections of the game, then uh, the ones which are like FPS, then the other ones which are this and that. So, you know, it's, 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 it's very fast moving and fast changing. I'm not sure really what results we'll get in, in, in due course from the industry. Don't forget people investing in video gaming are not necessarily gamers. They invest in diamonds, they invest in commodities, they invest in shares, in options, they invest in property, business, you name it. What they're interested in is the figures. And the figures don't match. There's trouble. I just want to ask Playmo, have you seen uh, the latest um, Mad Max Furiosa in cinema? Have you, have you seen the film? I went to see it yesterday in... Uh, um, Central London. I went to Leicester Square. In fact, I, I have Cineworld Unlimited, so I can I can go in at any time. And the old Empire Cinema, which had the big red carpet galas and premieres in the past, is now um, uh, in possession of Cineworld. Cineworld has overtaken the Empire's gone, uh, the old Empire, and uh, they basically cut the cinema in two. So the very big auditorium that was previously housing up to four, I think about three or four thousand people. Um, is now basically split into two different screens. One is called Super Screen, the other one is IMAX. And uh, I kind of prefer Super Screen a bit more to IMAX as they have a really very good balcony, so it can be quite far away from the screen. Um, IMAX, it's a massive big screen, but actually the seats are too close, so not really for my liking. And any couple of shorts. Um, went to see Furiosa yesterday. Uh, Fur Fur Furiosa. Mad Max Saga film is very good. It's very different to the rest of the series and uh, um, highly captivating. The only difference, I guess the biggest difference is the length. It's significantly longer than any other uh, uh, in the series. And uh, I thought, considering the number of adverts, the big campaign for it, and you know, the film being literally everywhere from bus stops to uh, the internet, that was doing well. But surprise, surprise already after one week, no longer playing in IMAX and, you know, being brought to very small screens. The reason for that is poor attendance. So I wondered how on earth is this possible for this film, which is so hyped up um, and, you know, part of this franchise and so incredibly popular and with a lot of interest globally, but the film hasn't even broken even, you know, badly considering its budget and everything else. And I've just looked at uh, the um, box office manager yesterday. Uh, they've barely passed $100 million on the global scale. And they were expecting $150 million to be met within the first three days of the film released in the US. So, you know, it does tell you that you can't easily coerce an audience into a particular preference. And I think it's more difficult today than in the past. In the past, people go and see just out of curiosity. But today, you can just access clips and trailers and, you know, see what something's like. That can be sometimes misleading. Um, Alfred Plamo says about the um, the game sales, which would start a little while back at midnight. The hype around those releases was fantastic. The store brought pizzas out for us all to have a slice while we waited at midnight uh, for the game at midnight i mean that's fantastic that's really a very nice very good store which one was it i want to go there <laughs> probably no longer there because lots of uh, stores had closed down due to the online purchases and game for instance in my local area had like three or two or three shops in every high street and there's the single one left, they've all gone. I think lots of those are being sold now online. Just one left in the Bigwood Green Shopping Centre. Yeah, if it's still there, I've not been there of late, but it was there a little while back. And also the offers were really not as good as what I've seen in the past. Yeah, trouble. Anyway, coming back to what I was saying about Furiosa. I really, you know, staggered to see the figures, and I was staggered to see that it was gone from IMAX in less than one week. It's a film you expect to be in IMAX for at least six weeks, you know, because I watched all these big titles in IMAX. It's just a completely different cinematic experience. You really, you know, anyone who's doubting, definitely worth that money that you pay for IMAX. Also, just 
maybe not in every IMAX. I've been to some on the continent, which didn't seem to be that big, like some of that we got here in London. And uh, um, the one I go to is in Enfield. Um, Enfield Cinevault is the cinema um, that belongs to the chain that's generally had uh, the best traffic in the UK. They're very, very well attended. Come, people come from all over and it's a very good cinema. They have excellent IMAX in there. Not really on the same level as uh, the one um, uh, that the BFI runs down on South Bank, but uh, you know, still very, very good. I'd say probably second best in London and massive big screen, huge auditorium and frequently not too well attended. So if you want to watch one of those films in peace and quiet, you just go to a, an early performance and you can really, really enjoy it. I've seen loads of films in there over the years and um, been almost every, well, you know, time permitting, every Friday when there's a new release, particularly the, the biggies, I go and see it in IMAX. Um, and uh, it's a proper cinematic experience. I don't really agree when people say, ah, oh, uh, going to cinema, no longer the same sort of experience. Well, it's no longer the same. There still is an experience. You know, you, you really kind of look forward to that film and you go there and you see it. And it's not just thoroughly enjoyable, but it, it's fully immersive, you know, with subwoofers, with sound, with everything else that you, you get there. Um, and also, if you go to a premiere of a film, I remember going to um, uh, some of the uh, Batman titles and also Hunger Games, and it was completely sold out you know, the whole cinema. And then watching it for the first time with an audience in there in, in um, you know, in IMAX with the special effects and the overall quality, like Dolby Atmos quality today, is is uh, um, unique. And I, I find it to be a lot better compared to uh, some of the other releases of the old. I remember watching Star Wars a little while back um, at... Uh, um, Leicester Square Odeon and the cinema wasn't particularly full and then because of that the sound was really funny you get sort of sound bouncing off the walls and particularly from the back because that, that's one of the biggest cinemas still left in the UK I'm not sure whether the big auditorium is still operating to be honest with you because I know they were doing a refurb and changing a few things but uh, um, so you would hear the echo, you know, which is seriously interfering with the sound quality, and you don't get that in IMAX. It's not possible. It's due to the way cinemas are built and everything. And amazing. Right. So, are we still waiting for this? I can't believe. I'm really curious to see whether, whether, you know, we'll, we'll get something going uh, at uh, four o'clock. Because according to according to uh, the calculator, and according to what Bungie said, should be all up and running at four o'clock. But well, let me just see whether that's the case or not. London, three forty-six. Okay, and then Bungie said. So that should be all done and dusted at 8 o'clock a.m. Pacific, and that should be 4 o'clock time. So I really want to see whether this will work or not. Well, we need to still wait and see. Still have to be a bit patient. But, you know... Anyway, let me have a look. Oh, there are quite a few people watching. I want to hear from other people. How are you guys doing? How is everybody today? I had a very good day yesterday. In fact, yesterday I had <clears throat> a medical day, the whole day dedicated to my health. So first I um, went to the doctors and then I went to my dentist and then I went to my optician. So all of that was polished off by 5 o'clock p.m. And uh, um, in fact, I discovered yesterday, I went to my optician because I felt that my eyesight was changing of late. I, I could feel the difference when I put my glasses on. Um, some of the areas, medium range, seemed a bit softer, out of focus. So to my great surprise, after having my eyes tested, we discovered that actually it's not that my eyesight is failing, but it's, it's improving. 
it's better compared to what it was a few years back and uh, the problem with the vision is to do with the improvement rather than the deterioration of the site as I suspected. suspected. So uh, I'm going to be getting new glasses uh, and they will have somewhat uh, of a lesser strength. That was, that was you know, really uh, very surprising. It's never happened to me before and, you know, I'm not a teenager. So to hear that at my age I'm uh, having that degree of improvement of my eyesight is, is a revelation. I you know, have not not come across that before, and uh, um, and then uh, I, I had a very good dinner. Dinner was terrific. There's, uh, I have to say, it's really quite surprising in the local area of North London. So that's uh, um, I got literally proper north. It's not like northeast or northwest. The areas from uh, Alexander Palace with Green Muscle Hill to Southgate lots of new Albanian restaurants and catering places. So we discovered, uh, um, myself and a couple of friends, a very nice Mediterranean restaurant at Sargate Station. And it's just across the road from the station. And have absolutely incredible meals and on very good prices. So I went there again yesterday. I had a really big meal. And they had uh, a sort of um, potato and uh, um, carrot stew with a bit of meat. The very big bowl you get, and, and freshly baked bread. It's like a big bread that was given to us, uh, and really, really, uh, really good, you know, like high quality, and completely full after eating that stew. Which is generally not the case at some of the restaurants. They give you like small bowls, it's like a proper home cooked uh, meal, as if uh, your grandmother was making it. And uh, this very good friend of mine recommended me this stew. He said, next time, because we, we, two of us went there, we had mixed grill, like the house grill. And that was not costing us much, you know, considering what it was. A big grill we could have been eating, but we were eating it half a night. And um, it was just like, really, absolutely terrific. So after having that meal, I went to uh, 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 my local library and returned a couple of books back and then went to Leicester Square to watch... Uh, um, Mad Max Saga Furiosa and uh, it was a great day you know very nice day as well it was very warm very sunny very summery and uh, could actually walk around town in shorts that was something I don't frequently in London and uh, uh, generally very very good then today is all about D-Day so as I finish my presentation I'll go to a big event that we have here at Castle and I'll be participating there will be paying respects to everybody who passed away during the uh, uh, invasion or during the liberation of France um, as we were disembarking in Normandy and uh, big well, commemorations already in uh, uh, Dunkirk and Calais and uh, we are going to be having something similar over here so I will be going to that really look forward to it see some of my old friends and uh, you know it's going to be a very memorable uh, type of occasion because it's 80 years since and today we are facing new challenges globally be interesting to see how that is reflected i've not watched uh, some of it live i'll watch it later today and uh, kind of look forward to digesting some of the information and some of the uh, activities i particularly enjoy the drills which are formidable in fact the other day we had uh, Hurricanes and Lancasters above us in here. They were off to Duxford, which is not too far from where I am. And they have like a regular display of those planes um, for various events, you know, kind of commemorations, but different types of events, which are Second World War related. There's a big army museum in there as well. And uh, always interesting to see. They were flying in formations, so there were three and threes and uh, they're flying quite low so it's very easy to see and that was quite interesting children really love watching these kinds of things so so a very good couple of days what has not been good is twitch and i have to say that i really am staggered by the lack of customer services that this company operates it's gone from bad to worse uh, i was recording my regular daily news and uh, on saturday i had to catch up with two days and so it was a lengthy stream, it was about two hours long, and it's quite lengthy for the news bulletin. And then guess what? 
nothing was recorded and the stream was live. We had participants come in and talk and ask questions and all sorts and nothing got recorded. So it's the first time it's happened to me on Twitch. I did have the same problem with Mixer when Mixer was operating for Microsoft. Uh, many problems with the Mixer app at the time and all sorts, but, you know, don't need to name them today. But this was for the first time happening on Twitch. So I reported it and received absolutely no assistance, you know, as a complete nonsense. Um, algorithm answering questions and sending nonsensical replies. And, but the fact is I wanted Twitch to be able to dig up the, the broadcast because it's got diagnostics. It went through Twitch servers. It's just all properly documented. No, it doesn't exist, never recorded, never was launched. You never streamed at the same time, that kind of nonsense. So to them, hang on. If, for instance, there was some sort of criminal activity taking place, you have everything saved on your servers. You can dig up whatever has gone through Twitch if there was a court order for this. But can you please investigate this and find out what's happened? Well, you know, where, where, where is my stream? Why is it not there? No attention given to whatsoever. So I've been really battling a tooth and nail really for about five days. And I've given up. I'm not getting anywhere. I, I said I'll, I'll go to um, Twitch headquarters in Oxford Street. In fact, I should have gone there yesterday. It was a bit late um, with my auditions appointments. I've been there a few times before for types of you know, industry get-together uh, events. And I'll talk to some of the leaders in there. So hang around. This is just completely unacceptable. I can't be running my streams, which are then not recorded, because if that's the case, I'll have to get separate platform to be recording and have doubles to ensure that this could be archived. Um, so I've not been able to do any news this week um, so far. I think I'll record them tomorrow for the week and uh, um, record them on UBS and then upload to Twitch rather than stream them live because it makes no sense. You know, it's just like the whole work in there is then sent down the drain. You, you can't retrieve it. And also obviously I talk from top of my head. I, I prepare sometimes few bits and pieces but generally it's it's a reflection on you know what's on my mind and I reflect on different thoughts ideas uh, responses uh, you know current trends and that is like irretrievable unless recorded so that's caused me a major headache and huge satisfaction in fact I considered whether I should start streaming through YouTube some of my stuff rather than here um, it also in for non-gaming they don't really have algorithms that operate properly. Don't nobody have seen that. Um, Playmob will probably know that. For just chatting and for um, radios and podcasts, you know, the category, it does, nothing seems to be happening. It just like it seems really garbled. For the games, it's a different story. The games pick up and uh, it's, it's kind of run differently algorithmically. Uh, so I tested that and I just was kind of staggered that uh, obviously for just chatting, if you have anyone who is semi-nude and doing things which they shouldn't be doing on Twitch, they will have many thousands of viewers. And um, for anything that is based on high quality content that is not uh, uh, presenting you with any elements of uh, uh, nudity or eroticism or anything of that sort, particularly uh, if it comes from the younger gainer stroke streamers then it doesn't really receive much attention and you know that's just the way it is and uh, uh, i think combining one and the other is, is is a good way of doing it i even considered that i should stream to youtube and twitch at the same time but then again the these kind of uh, um, services will have to be paid for and then it's a bit taxing on my bandwidth and you know it's, there's always some sort of issue somewhere which is really annoying. Uh, when you watch how to do videos and uh, um, this is what you need to do in order to be a successful streamer or technician or a game developer, you watch these videos or tutorials, everything seems so easy, so pedestrian, so perfect, nothing goes wrong. And once you really uh, get your hands on it, you realize it's a different story altogether. Many challenges, I'm afraid, for small streamers and content creators. And I, I feel and I believe there are going to be many more introduced. Um, 
you've seen the big guys trying to really um, restrict what content can be presented in a live arena because they keep clamping down on you know, content with copyright laws and licensing and God knows what else. And uh, if they feel that the capacity for their distribution or their overall gains are being diminished due to the presence of others, then they will obviously clamp down very hard. And uh, I talked about uh, Microsoft and uh, Xbox streams and Twitch and what could be causing the problems with, uh, you know, the integration of the Twitch app into the menu and that might, why it doesn't work anymore and so, so and so forth. And uh, um, there's been an opinion that this is done in purpose as they want to have as many people as possible uh, gravitate towards PCs because they have the monopoly on Windows, which is the operating system on PCs, and they want people to be using PCs for gaming. Therefore, they're pushing Game Pass for PC more than anything else. Evidently, uh, people will keep their PCs for other purposes but gaming, and uh, therefore, perhaps in the future, we'll no longer see many consoles produced. I don't think they will phase out Xbox. I think it will still stay there, but it may be a bit more expensive, and maybe produced in smaller quantity. And uh, generally, I think I wonder, with the figures released, whether they're at all relevant. You know, it really, I really feel that there's a lot of uh, skullduggery taking place in there because of those competitors. And I'm not convinced that uh, the independent monitoring bodies and authorities are up to scratch. I've seen these companies release figures which sometimes seem strange and um, in order to pursue the oppression policy or their or the direction they're taking, simply, you know. And uh, let me see, anyone else? No, we didn't have any other comments come in. Right, so let me try again. It is now 1600 hours in here, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, on the dot. Let's see what we have. Well, let's, let's hope we are going to be astonished. I really look forward to uh, the D-Day commemorations today. It will be spectacular here, the castle with beacons lit and, you know, fires burning and various other uh, drill-related uh, performances. So I'm very, very... Uh, it's a unique event. Right, I'm getting a message Due to increased traffic, login services to Destiny are currently being throttled. But what were you expecting? Diminished traffic on release. Um, okay, stand the screen. Just fearing that other error message momentarily. So I want to ask our friend Playmore. You obviously played the first section of the finest shape. Um, what did you like? Like, what did you find particularly um, interesting or challenging or novel at the end of the day? I think Pathfinder and uh, Prismatic is what I'm interested in the most. And also how this will work with that sort of six-week episode. Um, that's also very new. And whether the supers are going to be working as expected. It'll be challenging for people doing PvP with these extra supers, I think. It'll be more difficult. And also the question is how quickly will those supers recharge in the PvP, you know? It's gonna be the same like before or Well I guess we'll see. Just have to be patient. So I guess I'm in a queue now, right? Because that's the message telling you that you're just waiting up to a point where you're slotted in. Or something of that sort. Quite like the dialogue screen, you know? You've got like a, a good frame 
on your game. I didn't have the chat up there. It's much nicer than just uh, watching one static image. Got to say the uh, the uh, the screensavers created uh, by someone for Destiny that I'm using are very good. I've seen even some better ones on uh, Streamlabs, but I new Streamlabs for my streams, so I couldn't really access them. I think they're also to be purchased. Kind of beautiful images, and you know, maybe in due course, we'll see. I just like everything to be as simple as possible, as far as the streaming is concerned. As little hassle as possible, because <clears throat> otherwise, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're doing things live, and things are not working out, you become more preoccupied with the content delivery. And that's very similar to what you have with musicians playing live on the thing breaks down, like the equipment, your PA, and um, your amplifiers, uh, your pedals, you name it. And then they just become so preoccupied with the fact somebody doesn't work. And uh, <laughs> that's not always the most important thing when watching a gig. But you know what I mean? It's just if, if you have it as, sim as simple as possible, the setup which is easy and straightforward then you do not have to worry it did take me a little while to, to master podcasting on OBS and also tweaking and adjusting the audio levels and background music and the recordings of a rule has taken me a bit of time But you know, at the end of the day, everyone experiences the same thing like myself today. Just and talking and uh, um, obviously engaging with my community members, which is always great. But people record this, people archive this. You get this on YouTube, you get this on Twitch, and others will be watching saying, hang on a minute, this game doesn't seem to work. And I think Playmore and our other friends, Sun Peach and other guys who remember, a little while back, we had very many problems in Destiny 2, which were server-based. We were getting Weasel and Baboon and all kinds of fairy messages coming our way at all times. And then we were crashing, we booted out of PvP. You know, it's just not good, really. And also the question arises whether live server games really are the And to tell you the truth, I feel that the big corporations are getting cold feet on this. And it's always, yet again, back to the money. The cost of live server games is phenomenal. That's not just for the production of a game, it's for the maintenance, for the workforce, for everything else. And it's a headache because it sets up the expectation amongst the gamers that everything can be accessed at any time with ease. And that's not the case legal problems as well you know but they began to sunset content i think still this is not properly tackled in courts but in g court in g course this company may need to fork out billions of refunds to the customers because at the end of the day you did purchase a product which had withdrawn from them without any proper uh, uh notification or indeed a legal warning prior to the purchase because when you were purchasing expansions of destiny but not accessible anymore here today you were not told you purchased them for the time being and you will be losing them in three years right we were not told this and just like any product you will have to carry a warning if something is to be seriously wrong at a certain point by law we don't live anymore in an era where you could just flog anything without any degree of responsibility so I think the big companies like Microsoft, they realized RPGs are very expensive single player games. They'll pay off better in long term, you know? You don't have that degree of expense attached to them. So, you know. Well, Sun Peach says Bungie, Bungie Help said you should be able to log back in. Here I am. I'm in a queue. 
the maintenance stopped 10 minutes ago at 1600 according to what they said but at the end of the day depends on what region you're in depends on what platform you're accessing it from depends on the number of participants um, I think it's fair to say that the number of participants on all platforms combined on Tuesday were exceeding any other Destiny release. You know, it's like a huge number of people. And um, I mean, Paul Tazzy gave it a very, very good review, but I'm certain he played it on, you know, pre release access. Like any major reviewer, they get coins and they can, uh, you know, play the game well in advance he did say that the campaign was amazing yet the he's not completing the story so a um, everyone will have to go into the raid to defeat the witness and then there will be some other like uh, uh, an epilogue type of co uh, content arising later as well so that won't be on Friday but maybe I don't know, a few weeks or a few months I have heard some rumours this week about Destiny 3 being released. Has anyone else heard anything of it? Because as far as I know, the Destiny 2 team have been completely denying any of it. The speculation is because this section of the saga is coming to an end, there will be something new. But I still think the indication coming from Bungie is not about the creation of the new title. They want everything to stay within one big universe. And they'll be working on this as we carry on. To have Destiny 3, if for instance all the other content of Destiny 1 and 2 was being imported into Destiny 2, um, I think for me, it needs to be a bit like Elder Scrolls Online, for all the content to be present in one big arena. You know, so you can just walk from one to the other, and watch and play and find out what's what. Anyway guys, do you know that somebody had created a video which lasts about 10 hours um, that is giving you the entire Destiny lore retold? So it's accessible on through my Twitter. I have that posting uh, on my Twitter. You can just access it there. Or you can just go to YouTube and say... You can play on search uh, Destiny lore 10 hour whatever and you, you, you get the video. Some other and uh, it's definitely a good guide for anyone who is interested in revisiting or... So... You see, I can't uh, um, depart from this uh, queue. I need to wait in the queue to get in. No. I'm in a queue, I can't really get out. Just need to wait and see what uh, will be happening. Can't do anything about it. So how is everybody doing today? What are you doing actually? Is everyone stuck on the finest shape like myself, waiting to be uh, allowed to come in? Or are you able to get access? Are you accessing it and playing it? Are you doing any other games? Just. Uh, curious to hear. You can see that we've had quite a few people watching and waiting for the content to come up, but you know, it's all down to Doesn't provide them with any form of service if you know, people worldwide can be just watching that we are stuck in a queue for a long while. It's, it's a non-functioning game. You know, in view of these problems, and considering that the funny shape is still evolving, there'll be more content to come in, I really have a fear that they probably will sunset some of the content. That's, that's my suspicion. Some of it will be depleted to a degree. It will disappear. It'll say, oh, not performing too well. People are not accessing it anymore. And, you know, Because maybe there's just... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, there may be just too much of the content. You know, huge voluminous material. That uh, um, 
is clutching the space. And then nobody can get in. After waiting in a queue for 15 minutes, I'm booted. And I'm getting now this message saying that the Destiny servers are not available yet again. Our friend Sandpeat says, um, uh, I haven't bought it yet. I've been playing Fortnite recently. Uh, yeah, I mean, Fortnite is a fantastic game. And very many people who played Fortnite already for some time are still on it. And you know that they keep importing various characters from films, from other medias, from television series, from other games. And, um, you know, it's just very, very ingenious effort pick right from the start. One of the most popular games of all times and doing really well financially and otherwise. But yeah, I just think that some games like Apex, like Warzone, like uh, um, Fortnite, PUBG, They'll have longevity. They're always interesting. And also, these games are always new, depending on what team you play the game with. It's never the same. And uh, this is why I don't like deathmatches, you know. Deathmatch is just completely unimaginative. A big open world map where you have to be contesting uh, other uh, competents and uh, other people to uh, survive is a different ball game altogether. It's a lot more enjoyable, and you can enjoy. Uh, you can um, engage in different types of strategies, and you know, it's it's it, it's just. As I said, every single I remember we played Vidansk in Warzone for quite some time, up to a point where they were pulling the plug on on the map, and every single time you get get in, you know where the where the places are, but it's a different game. That is what makes it very exciting, very replayable. Yeah. So our friend Sandpeach says that he's playing Fortnite. Are you playing any other games at all? Any other FPS? Any live server games? Or maybe any, any um, single player games? I'd be also curious to hear. Curious to hear whether you found any other titles to be of interest. We have so many at the moment. I'll give an example. Uh, at the moment, well, recently, I completed um, Tomb Raider Ultimate Edition on Xbox Game Pass, which is a terrific game. I loved it, really every bit of it. Recommend it to everyone. It's actually a horror struck survival game, more than action struck adventure. It's quite brutal. And uh, I was quite surprised by, by, by the approach that the, the developer introduced. And then I played Hellblade, which I also completed. Very brutal. Um, one of the best games ever made. So uh, on every level, from technical to any other. And definitely everyone should have a look, play it. And what's interesting is lots of reviews have been written about the game. And not a single one indicated once he completed the game you unlock a different narrator and you can replay it with different people telling you the tale, which means they change the perspective of the game completely. Nobody writes anything about it. I really, you know, you really wonder, did people play the game? Did they actually complete it? Did, did they know that the unlockable was provided? So, um, so at the moment, uh, I have Death Stranding, which I never completed before, and I figured, actually, I was playing it for about a week, what the reason for that was. <clears throat> it has this repetitive stealth where you need to be walking very long distance without much taking place in there, um, which is kind of putting me off to a degree. And uh, also found the character and the environment to be a bit cold and a bit austere. I like the game, don't get me wrong, but there's this sort of element where you don't really feel um, what he feels. And that, that I think <laughs> should be of concern. And uh, I played it now every night for about a week, and then I decided, ah, oh, I'll try something else. And I've gone to uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is a terrific game. I mean, honestly, I played already now about three or four hours of it. It's just really terrific. Everything is so good. From the environment to the characters, the storytelling, it's a masterpiece. And everyone should really try it and play it. And uh, you got to download it if you're on PlayStation 5. And then you have the you know the, the full effect of the quality that the game has, and uh, 
the sound, the music, the effects, the dialogue, the lovability of these characters. And you really feel for them. You know, you wondered, I mean, I wonder frequently, why is Final Fantasy so popular amongst cosplayers? But as soon as you play Final Fantasy VII Remake, you get to know immediately uh, uh, as to why. As people really identify with those characters, you really feel for them. You feel the pain, you, you can identify with the struggles, and everything else, you know? And it's visually stunning. Honestly, it's just really mouth-watering on every single level. Like in every fan fantasy game, there are some very difficult bosses in there that need to be eliminated. So, you know, beware. Make sure you practice your role-play there with these characters. Make sure that you are uh, sw switching from one character to another. And remember their superpowers, and I mean the special powers, and uh, uh, anything else that is based on their kind of in-game mechanics that will help you in order to defeat those difficult bosses. And then in addition to that, I've downloaded also Immortals of Amium. That's a great game. Um, very, very badly received for some reason, but I played the initial section and it did remind me of Anthem, I've got to say, right at the beginning. It had a similar sort of uh, prologue where you were talking to various characters and then initially you would only have two options, two questions uh, from which to ask compared to the usual in RPGs would be, you know, quite a selection for you to choose from. Uh, but, you know, enjoy the opening of the game, but we'll see how it progresses. I've not gone down the battle sequences, I've not gone into the army yet, and I uh, want to see what this hoo-ha was all about, because I, I watched Immortals of Avium on, the, on various showcase presentations, and I really, you know, the, the images, the visuals, and the whole idea grabbed me. But they really pitched it for the worst possible time for the release. Two weeks before Starfield. I mean, you know, <laughs> who is going to be paying 70 or $80 for that game if Starfield is just about to be released on the Game Pass? And um, that was just a complete shot in the dark. Really, really bad. Really gone the wrong way, you know? And I want to see whether the game is as good or as bad um, as some reviews indicated. So I'm really quite curious about it. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I've been doing. I've uh, had a couple of other indie titles uh, downloaded and told you all about it um, uh, in my news bulletins. So um, busy. And more titles to come. Don't forget on Sunday. Sunday is a big day. On Sunday, uh, we'll have big Xbox presentations, uh, showcase events, as well as the introduction of Black Ops 6. So that's a big presentation on Sunday. And throughout the whole week, we are having uh, the Summer Game Festival that is uh, full of different types of presentations coming from developers. So I definitely want to invite everyone to watch some of those presentations and participate as much as you can, you know, chat and comments and views and all sorts which really helps and we'll get to know about all the big titles you know everything that is coming our way in the near future so very excited to see what's happening with avowed um then it's clockwork what's it called clockwork clockwork the big game that's similar to um well the visuals very similar to bioshock and uh, um, many other titles curious about black ops 6 of course and everything else right so let me see whether we can get back in hopefully we are going to be able to do that are we going to be sitting in a queue again let's see I want to thank uh, Tyke Mython for joining our community, also a colleague streamer and content creator. So great to see you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, what else do we have here?
Well, nothing much really. Some news on Dragon Age, just seeing it, just a moment. The next Dragon Age has been renamed the Veil Guard. So on Tuesday we are going to have a presentation coming from Bioware and Electronic Arts and it will be 15 minute gameplay clip coming from them and all linked to Dragon Age, so very curious about that. Yeah, it's tomorrow. I still need to see whether I'll be able to close stream some of this. Summer Game Festival. I need to nest it is today, really. And uh, then everyone can watch through my channel any of those activities. Basically, you can watch it through YouTube, 4K60, Twitch, Drop. TikTok reward, Steam, Twitter. It all starts tomorrow. Uh, that would be Is it ten PM British summertime? Eleven PM Central European. Yep, that's coming our way tomorrow. Well, our friend Sandpeach indicated uh, that uh, Destiny servers are available. So let me just see again. Uh, go back to Bungie Help. And Bungie Help is saying what? Update has been rolling out across all platforms and regions and players can now log back into Destiny 2. I wonder whether I have to be uh, restarting the whole thing to see whether the update's there or something. Because really, nah, it says Destiny servers are not available. It says Destiny servers are not available yet again. Let me see what uh, our community members are saying there. Thanks for no extended downtime. I'm trying to log in. Servers are still not working. No, not able to come back in. Still having login issues. Hopefully sooner rather than later. I spent more time trying to get into the game this week than actually playing it. Error messages there posted are there. No, not being able to get in. Can't log in. Service unavailable. Still waiting, still waiting, still waiting. Not working. Can't play the game. Service not giving access. And this message in here. Again, error message. All of that coming in within the last couple of minutes. There's just like so many people writing that they can't get in. And I'm unfortunately just one of them, as you could see. Nothing seems to be working in here. Disappointing that, what is it like, the second day since the game was released and I still can't really experience any of it.
tells me that we are signing in and then I get the queue. And then after being in a queue, I get the error message. Anyone else out there? You guys trying to log in? Are you also having the same problem? I'm on PlayStation 5. Curious to hear. Anyone? Is anyone having the same problem as me? I'm curious. Speak up. Let's hear it. There's nothing much to do. I can just talk to myself in here and uh, make another hot drink. In fact, that's exactly what I'll do.
Well, I'm afraid I'm not having uh, my joy at all. I just keep getting either the error message or the queue, and I'm not getting in. So I'll be quite curious to hear from our viewers, community members, and everyone who's here with us today, um, whether you are able to get in. Are you able to log in? Because I'm getting messages on Bungie Hub from around the globe. That's the US, France, Belgium, Denmark, Croatia, Italy, Portugal, Canada. People just can't log in. And they're saying, I'm West Coast, I'm on West Coast, I'm Central, I'm this and the other. It's just the same problem. You know, the, the expansion was not ready to be released. That's, that's the reason as to why this is happening. They already delayed it a couple of times, but you know, if something's not ready... It's funny, I listened to Ron McCaffrey and Destin Legary the other day, the IGN guys, and they talked quite a lot, um, Destin in particular, um, about Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite also had a bit of a rough release, um, and you remember, it had been delayed by 12 months. There weren't any major problems with, on the technical side of things, it was more to do with the content. Destin did say that they've introduced lots and lots of new things, and uh, new maps introduced to PvP, new inclusions to the open world. So really, from what he had said, the game had been massively improved, but I've got to say, Remember that they've taken a decision to um, deplete Xbox new console of their release um, to come out on the same day. So the idea was to repeat the success of um, Halo Combat Evolved from that thing it was in 2001. So you had the console release together with the game being a big introduction and I think for the first year there were hardly any other titles on Xbox but Combat Evolved. So they want to repeat that with Halo Infinite. And 343 just said the game's not ready. We, you know, we, we can't release the game if it doesn't function properly. It will be a disaster. And therefore they delayed it by 12 months. And I think Bungie should have done exactly the same thing. It tells me that the game's not ready. They released the title, they released the DLC, and it's not performing. So they're like trying to make it work. And it is not going to work because it's not ready. You know, it's just, I don't think it is just down to people who are coming out at the same time. I really don't. I think it's to do with the, the, ga the game is. It's all well and fine being ambitious. But if you are ambitious, you have got to have the means to which you will deliver. It reminds me of um, me and, you know, kind of my friends and colleagues in our youth where we were wanting to be something like for instance i uh, had uh, a huge talent in writing and i wanted to be a, a film historian a film reviewer film critic and you name it and it was all like a big big i want to be that and then i was given opportunities to do exactly that and you know what i didn't perform too badly but once i sat there at a typewriter needing to write um, you know, it did take a bit of time, and I realized every single article and research and thoughts being gathered together, some consultation at that time with colleagues, because we didn't have, you know, the internet services, and uh, um, it did take a lot of time and effort. And sometimes these articles were not ready as quickly as I imagined them to be. They couldn't be sometimes polished off in 24 hours, because I had to research. I had to find out more about the director, about the actors, but okay, today you have your mobile phone, you, you know, go to IMDb, to Wikipedia, you access other websites to get all the information. In those days, that was stuff of uh, 2001 Odyssey. It was just not, it's sci-fi. Nobody, nobody had even the slightest notion that this kind of instant access will ever be available. And uh, it was just confined to Stanley Kubrick and his, you know, big sci-fi epic happening up there in space. We had to do manual research, going to a library, getting the magazine's periodicals, reading from them, taking notes, going back home, getting on a typewriter. So, you know, if something's not ready, don't release it. Make sure you work hard to, to 
create an entity that will be fully functional. And I think that's probably one of those uh, big problems for this industry. Huge desire, huge ambition, yet there is the spanner in the works somewhere. Be it either the investors wanting the money back quick, pushing for an early release, or you not having access to the tech, or the tech not performing well, or not many enough servers being accessible, or something, you know, whatever that is. But just make sure that all of the boxes are ticked off in full. Don't really jump in before you learn to swim. You can see that everyone's waiting. The answer, so I suspect we are all waiting to be able to get in. See, I'm in a queue, waiting in a queue for 10 minutes, and then I keep getting the same error message. The message says that the Destiny servers are not available. Anyway, my friends, whilst we are waiting, I'll just have a bite to eat for a few minutes. If anybody wants to say something, just type a message and I'll respond to it straight away because I've got everything here on my secondary. I can see all the messages and all the comms. Um, I really want to hear from everyone who's played the final shape so far, what your experience was. I want to hear not just about the technical issues gone to the campaign have you seen the novelties have you experienced the pathfinder did you did you try your prismatic how did it work is it a lengthy grind what do we need to do in order to get it etc etc just pick me some messages so we can get some communication some discussion flowing in here you know it's funny i always think that my channel does have very many destiny one veterans attached to regular streams and um, i watched some of the big guys like Glad and Sweatsicle and the others. And you always get, you know, when, when you watch the streams, you realize there's only a few people who are communicating on a regular basis. You get bots coming in, you get all kinds of silly messages and emotes uh, being plugged in. There's only like a few, a small number of people who are always engaged. And I think that's always the very best sign on what type of community somebody has fully on board. Sweatsicle won the What was it? The competition that Bungie will run last week. And it was his team that won. Oh yeah, I know what it was. It was um, on Onslaught, I think, on the uh, seasonal activities. And information was published on This Week in Destiny. So if anyone's interested, just either listen to my podcast that describe everything in depth or simply access This Week in Destiny, you'll get the information. But he's like a tip-top Destiny uh, gamer and somebody who likes PvP and has a very, very good team together with him. So, you know, they obviously won, and uh, um, they, they managed to get all the rewards. Okay, I'll just have a bite to eat, and then we can carry on in a minute, ho hoping that we are going to be able to get in. If not, we'll call it today. I still give it a bit, bit more time, but, you know, it's getting very frustrating. Um, it's really becoming very frustrating. I mean, uh, then. And this is the sixth maintenance in Fortier Towers. Sixth. What can I say? Anyway.
Our friend Playmore says that uh, he had an update to D2 version 101.1.2.000. Um, did you have to restart the game in order for that to be fully installed? Or, you know, what what was the score? We were able to get back in. Because obviously, if, if I need to restart the whole thing, I'll do that. I don't want to be ending the stream and then going back in if not because surely the game will need to tell me that this update needs to be uh yeah i think the game will tell me that the update is required because otherwise i won't be able to do any it won't be able to uh come in at all you know it's just probably i don't know what's causing it Because at the moment, it looks like we are being left in a queue, so we're just queuing up and waiting, and then it tells us that the servers are not available. That's all I'm getting. I don't know. I'll give it a bit of time, but you know, the D-Day event will be taking place after 7 o'clock, so I don't want to be getting in 5 to 7, and then I have to depart. That will be doubly frustrating. <clears throat> now this one moment please is basically the queue. So I'm being slotted in a queue and then I'm being booted. So I'm in the queue and then I'm out. It's similar to what you had with um, the Crucible, you know, like in Destiny 1. You're waiting, 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 and then boot. I just think that they're probably... They don't have enough space to accommodate the overall number of gamers. And that's just disastrous, really. Evidently, you need to anticipate and project for the number of gamers according to um, the previous activities, the sales, whatever, you know. I mean, surely half a million should be standard for people to come in at the same time. But I don't think it's, it's enabled. It will probably be costing them too much. The offering probably a lot less. Well, if I'm to trust the stats, what I've seen was that the figures were reaching half a million on release between 350 and 470. That was sort of what I've seen. But whether you know the stats are correct, God knows, could be all rigged and could be all totally uh, invented. You never know, really. I just really fear that, similar to football, you're getting you know, the masters of the dark arts coming in, in order to manipulate. And uh, I have seen lots of stories circulated that are completely damaging to certain developers and publishers, and are completely invented by the competitors and the allies. It's an ugly game, ugly kind of uh, game out there, really, the way I see it. People should be straightforward, and if your game doesn't perform well, take it on the chin, create a new one, you know? You know the traders slogan, cut your losses short, make your profits run. It's basic, right? So if your, your games are not performing well, just forget about them. Make a new one that will perform, but don't try to squeeze on others to pay for what hadn't worked just because you feel sorry for yourself or the fact that your investment went astray or something. People need to realize that any form of investment is always a huge risk. And it's not just financial. I mean, just think about people investing in education or knowledge and they're not being able to get jobs. It's reality. It doesn't guarantee to anyone that a certain type of education will be enabling you to be holding certain positions. It will be down to lots of different factors and people need to understand this. And that's exactly the same. Anyway, I'm eating my yogurt with a couple of cheese buns, and they're very good, I have to admit. So I'll try to finish this off, and I'll still wait for myself as well as for everyone else to be slotted in. 
uh, it's a mystery to me what maintenance they're performing. Because yesterday's maintenance was, I think, five hours. And then the one before was 24 hours, so there were mini maintenance sessions of a few hours in between. And they're still not making it fully functional, which tells me the game's not ready to be released. That's, that's all I can tell you. If something's ready to be released, then it works. It's just the basic principle. Okay, I'll be back shortly. All right, friends, I've got some news for you. So if you are wondering what you need to be doing, <clears throat> you need to check your Destiny game on PlayStation 5 and see whether the update has been fully 
installed. If it hasn't, you will need to install it. So I'm just watching it at the moment as it's being installed. I'm wondering whether it will ask me to restart the game. Um, if it does, then I have to discontinue. Well, I have to end the broadcast and restart. But um, the good thing is it's uploading really fast. So I'll be able to tell you very shortly what the score is. So this update indeed did arrive to consoles and I guess to all platforms and it does need to be installed to be getting back in. So if you're like myself, just sitting and waiting, um, it isn't going to work all by itself. Just want to save you some time and trouble. That's, that's what it is. It says it's queued. Why is it queued? Should be installing it.